Hello and welcome to Rich Rides. This week I'm doing a review on the bike I've been using for the last two months. It's a Barbetta 210. So firstly let's talk about the riding position. As you can see I'm very very upright on this. It's more like riding a bicycle and it even has pedals. You actually use those to get the bike started. It does feel a very relaxed, comfortable riding position and it's got a fairly decent padded seat. Um, suspension wise it's fairly non-existent but slightly better than I expected when I looked. So at the rear it's got twin shocks but upon further investigation these twin shocks are actually solid so they just have a spring and no real damper and on the front it's similar at the bottom of the front forks then there's springs and they're covered with gaiters so yeah so it's very minimal suspension but at the sorts of speeds you're doing here we're doing sort of 45 kilometers an hour then it's fine until you hit bumpy stuff and then of course it's all over um, but you tend to go over bumps very slowly and pick your lines carefully. Handling wise then unless the tarmac's super smooth then you certainly won't be trying to go around corners quickly on it. The riding position doesn't lend itself to that anyway. The speed doesn't either. Um, any bumps just send you completely offline so you tend not to lean that much on this either unless it's pretty smooth tarmac. When it comes to the brakes of this bike, then again, not great. I think they're originally sort of 1960s design of this bike and haven't really changed till they stopped making them around 1990, I think it was. Uh, this particular one's, I think, a 1982. Um, so the brakes themselves, they're cable operated, not hydraulic, and the drums both front and rear. As far as controls are concerned, then there's not many, but it is a little bit different to a normal motorbike or moped, whatever you want to call this. Um, uh, there's no ignition, that's the first thing, so you literally just kickstart it and you're away. So bearing that in mind, even though it's obviously not an expensive bike, security wise you always have to lock it up, because otherwise anyone could just step on it and off they go. Um, there is a kill switch over on the right hand side but like I say it's not even ignition that's just a kill switch um, front brake is on the right where you'd expect but the rear brake isn't a foot brake it's the left lever so instead of your clutch you've got the rear brake there and as you can see I stole a bell <laughs> so that's my horn that's stolen off my children off one of their bikes so it didn't even have a horn a standard and it has no indicators either so you have to use hand signals so it doesn't get much simpler controls than this I also only have one mirror um, uh, very rarely you'll be overtaking something and need to use the right mirror anyway um, but I find myself constantly looking in the left one looking for cars approaching and as you can see you can forget command position on this because you're going so, so slowly you just need to sit at the side and let stuff pass as easy as possible. As far as those brakes are concerned, like I say, the left lever is your rear brake, right lever is your front brake like normal and the brakes aren't particularly good, they're cable operated drum brakes all round so you do need to keep an eye on the adjustment of those. As long as you're not going too fast then they're okay. But yeah, the, don't expect Brembo performance out of them. They're adequate as long as you're going slowly. But that's about it, they're not great. If you try to slow down from sort of 50Ks, then if you try to do that quickly, just doesn't happen. It's a fairly scary experience if you had to do an emergency stop. So as we're talking about performance then 
despite it being called a 210 it's a 49 cc engine and the good things about that because it's 49 cc and has pedals it's not even classed as a moped out here in the czech republic so you don't need registration you don't need mot or the czech equivalent of mot uh, all you need is insurance there's no road tax or anything either um, so the insurance cost me six pounds for the year so with that and the miles per gallon which i worked out exactly the other day because i ran out of fuel so i knew exactly how much fuel was in it before and how much i'd used then uh, i got 110 miles per gallon so when you consider how old this is then that's pretty comparable with modern day stuff and this is two stroke of course as well so so yeah so 110 miles per gallon six pound insurance getting on two wheels doesn't get much cheaper than this so talking of performance this is about it so we're doing around 50 kilometers just under that oh, just over that so around 50 kilometers an hour so that's um, so that's 30 miles per hour 50 kilometers per hour so this is about as good as it gets really once you're at this speed then you do get some vibrations through your seat but surprisingly little through the bars actually but yeah that's pretty much maxed out is that but it's a 50 cc so, well 49 cc and i think it's two and a half horsepower so you can't expect much more really as you can see in sort of town traffic and these 30 mile an hour limits it's absolutely fine you can keep up with this traffic okay and that's what this bike's designed for it's not designed for any long distance it's sort of popping down to the shops going to the next village those kind of things and for that it's pretty good it does everything you sort of need it's very easy to ride you just jump on always start straight away um, it's got a manual choke you do have to use that when it's cold but it's, it's literally a button you press on the side of the carburetor start it up once it's warmed up for about a minute you can then knock that choke off and the way you knock the choke off is simply by accelerating um, past about I think three quarters or half full revs and it kicks off then automatically knocks the choke off something I usually do in my reviews is talk about the weight of a bike um, this is definitely the lightest bike I've ever ridden so typically a lot of modern big bikes these days uh, around 200 kilos um, this is only 50 kilos so you can actually pick the thing up so uh, at the place we were staying about a month ago then to get into the garden you had to go up a couple of steps so I think there were four or five steps so you could actually manhandle the bike up by yourself up the steps and through so I wouldn't like to try that with something like a BMW GS or something. When I was talking about controls earlier, I actually missed one thing off and there's a headlight switch as well on the back of the headlight itself. Uh, the way the electrics work are a bit strange, so there's no battery whatsoever and it's 6 volts rather than 12 volts. So basically when you kick over the engine that produces the voltage so the light itself will then come on if it's switched on and that's six volts so it goes to a thyristor I think it's called um, uh, that's then regulated so that everything's six volts that's used for the coil and the headlight and that's about it that's the only electrics so electrics don't get any simpler I managed to get hold of the workshop manual for one of these and the wiring diagram is one page with about 10 lines on it that's it it's so simple uh, and the whole bike is super simple and has been designed so you can do everything yourself so when I got this bike 
had been sat unused for two years in a dusty garage covered in a thick layer of dust, hadn't been used at all. I managed to get the thing running within a couple of hours. Didn't take much. Some fuel, made sure fuel was getting there. New spark plug, made sure it was sparking okay. Fired up and kicked out a bit of smoke, but that was it. And then I just went over everything else, adjusted chains, oiled and greased everything, made sure everything was tight that should be tight, and everything that was loose that should be loose. And that was it, I was away. Next day I got the insurance sorted and I was on the road. So I say a few hours work and it was recommissioned and back on the road. And it's been faultless since I've done that. The only time I thought there was a problem is when I ran out of fuel, because of course there's no fuel gauge whatsoever, no fuel light or anything. Um, and I just didn't realise how many miles that I'd done on it. But one comedy thing that this bike, because it does have pedals, so if you run out of fuel, what you can do is disconnect the engine. There's a special little, not lever, um, but pulley that you can pull off and withdraw into a separate position. And then what you can do is use the pedals without the engine connected, so it's just like a very heavy bicycle. So I thought I was going to have to do that, but thankfully there was enough in the reserve um, to get me home and to a fuel station. Something I didn't mention when I was talking about the engine is the gearbox. It does actually have one. It's two-speed automatic, so it's just a sort of twist and go. You don't need to mess around changing gears. So let's do my usual positives and negatives. So on the positives first, firstly is the cost. So you can pick one of these bikes up for about two, 250 pounds, something in this sort of condition. Um, so it's cheap to buy. Running costs are super, super cheap. As I said before, you get about 110 miles per gallon just need to pre-mix that about 50 to 1 with two-stroke oil because it's a two-stroke engine so fuel is cheap no tax or registration that MOT that kind of stuff to worry about in the Czech Republic at least and your only other cost is insurance which like I said before for me it was six pounds a year so that's the first one. I don't think you could get on two wheels cheaper than this. The second big positive is just how simple everything is. And that goes from the sort of riding. It's dead easy to ride. If you can ride a bicycle, you could ride this. So even someone with no motorcycling experience could jump on this and instantly feel at home and be able to ride. Also from the maintenance point of view, then it's super super simple. Um, I reckon that if you had a multi-tool, a spark plug spanner, a couple of screwdrivers, a couple of allen keys, that's all you'd need to keep this thing running for years. It really is simple, it doesn't get any more basic than this. Number three is the freedom it will give you. If you need a motorcycle fix like I do all the time, then it would have been too difficult for me to sort of try and buy a motorbike here and all tax and insurance and getting it registered, all those kinds of things. This was a really easy way for me to get on two wheels. And for what it's designed for, it's brilliant. So I didn't realise, yes, that you're limited to 50 kilometres an hour, but on Friday last week I had to use the bicycle instead of this and I didn't realise just how good this was for just doing a few miles where on the bicycle it felt a lot harder work obviously because you're pedalling it was a lot lot slower so yeah so for people who just want a bit of freedom and to have some fun because it is actually fun to ride as well then yes it's just giving you that in a really simple 
way, even if you only used it a handful of times a year, it, it's not costing you anything. It's just sat there. You know it's going to run. You know if anything goes wrong, it's simple to fix. There's nothing complicated. So yeah, it just does everything nicely that it's designed to do. Yes, it's not a Tahora. It's not designed for big A road like even this one I'm on here. Then uh, I think it's a sort of 60 mile an hour limit. It's not designed for this kind of stuff. It's designed for those 30 mile an hour limits and just tootling around. From a practicality point of view, it worked as well. So uh, I needed to collect some shopping, those kinds of things. This is, and most of them do have this basket on the back instead of a top box. Um, I have seen some with top boxes on. Um, but just having that so you can throw stuff in the back and take it back home, it's way easier than trying to carry it if you didn't have a car. So any negatives? Well obviously the biggest one is the speed. Then here you can see I'm so 45 slowly getting up to 50. There we go 50. That's it. Uh, we can't go any quicker so you do feel exposed on these larger roads. Um, there's just no getting away with that and even in the UK where the law stands with 16 year olds on 50cc mopeds there's no getting away from that 30 mile an hour speed limit which I think is a bit dangerous to be honest but there's nothing you can do about that it is what it is. So any other negatives? Well yes the suspension um, or lack of suspension as you can see on this bumpy road here you're having to sort of focus a bit and concentrate and then finally the, all these things they're, they're all small things that add up and again it's just stuff you sort of notice over time then uh, the lack of an ignition and any security then just leaving it anywhere you have to faff around putting a lock I've just got a bicycle lock that goes through the rear wheel and a key on that, like I say, just a sort of bog standard bicycle lock, but it's just a pain having to constantly put that on and off, even if you're getting off the bike for a couple of minutes to go into a shop. And I guess uh, another thing that's a bit strange when you get on that I do think is a negative is because you've not got any lights apart from a headlight, so there's no indicators, so you have to use your arms. Um, and there's no brake light, which I think is a little bit dangerous, to be honest. We're about to see the biggest negative, though. This hill's fairly bumpy, but more importantly, fairly steep as well. As you can see, we're already rapidly losing speed. I know it's an incredibly bumpy hill, this as well. It's awful. Um, but because I know this hill, it's about to go down, knock itself down a gear. There we go and you're going super slow here. Yes, it's steep, but we're doing 20 kilometers an hour. So, yeah, so that's not great. So that's the biggest sort of thing that, yes, it's underpowered into second gear again, but when you hit a hill, then it really kills it. So in summary, what do I think of the Babetta 210? I think it's great for what it's designed for, which is just this popping around, just local riding, short trips, just easy to look after and cheap to run. So it does all those things brilliantly. Could I have it as my only bike? I don't think I could. Um, it served a purpose here. I've loved having two wheels at least for the last couple of months while I've been out here. Um, and this has served that purpose. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that, seeing something on the other end of the scale of the 150 horsepower things that I sometimes ride. So please do give it a like, ask any questions in the comments, and do subscribe to the channel. As I say, I ride a real variety of bikes, so this is probably the, well, it's definitely the lowest powered bike I've ridden and reviewed but I've also ridden some things that sort of 160 horsepower and sort of, I reckon the biggest bike 
I've ridden is the 1250 GS, that's probably the biggest size engine, so it's a real variety. As well as the sort of riding reviews, and I just do anything that's motorcycle related from sort of restorations and tips and things I learn, I try to share on the channel. So I hope you found all that useful and see you next week.